It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley are here. So's Rich Woods from NeoWin because we've got a big show for you. They're discussing what Windows Cloud might mean. Apparently, there's a new SKU coming. We'll also take a look at the latest build as we inch towards the creator's update. That and a whole lot more coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and once again, time for Twit's audience survey. We'd really like to hear from you. It's only going to take a couple of minutes, really, that's all. Just go to twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. Your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. And thanks for your continued support. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 503, recorded Wednesday, February 1st, 2017. Sneaker Streaker. Windows Weekly is brought to you by... Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. When it comes to the big decision of choosing a mortgage lender, work with one that has your best interest in mind. Use Rocket Mortgage for a transparent, trustworthy home loan process that's completely online at quickenloans.com slash windows. And by Amazon Web Services. For companies to succeed today, they need a range of tools that most cloud vendors just don't offer. Amazon Web Services, the leading cloud service provider, listens to builders, offering more solutions than any other cloud provider. Check out podcast.aws and see how AWS lets builders build. And by WordPress. WordPress powers 27% of the sites on the web, more than any other platform. Now it's easy to get started with 27% off a premium or business plan at wordpress.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where uh, we talk about Microsoft and the latest news from Microsoft with Paul Thorat from Thorat.com, T-H-U-R-O-T-T.com. Mary Jo Foley of all about Microsoft.com, the ZDNet blog. And there's somebody in between you. It's a little sandwich today. Hello, Paul. Hello, Mary Jo. Hello, Leo. Hello. Hello. And introduce our special guest. Sure, Hello, I will. Rich. Our, our <laughs> special Rich. guest is somebody both of us know pretty well. His name is Rich Woods. He is the hey, senior guys. North American editor for NeoN. Nice. Nice. We're always quoting NeoN, so it's good to give yeah. him a little credit now here. Yes. Sure. And you guys Thanks. probably run into each other all the time at uh, conferences and events. And oh, yeah. Midnight parties mm -hmm. and things like that. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Rattle and hum. Vegas. Yeah, we've well, seen him there. Yeah. Are you in New York, Rich? <laughs> yeah, I'm on Long Island. Ah. So close enough. All right. So it's a <laughs> East Coast contingent is well represented right. here. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, uh, do we just want to have Rich pitch in or do you guys want to interview him? <laughs> <laughs> Well, he wants to we pitch a, in with us on our first story. On the first yeah. story. Right. Well, we can grill him as well if you'd like. For the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Grilled rich doesn't sound like my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Although paleo, very paleo. So uh, what well, do, we should say why. We, yeah, originally what's going on today, here? Originally today, Rich was going to take Paul's place on Windows Weekly. Yeah. Because Paul was going to be traveling? <laughs> I was going to be in Africa <laughs> today, Leo. What? Yep. <laughs> for an event or for trap for yeah, tourism? Yeah, for a Microsoft event. And then at the last minute, Brad, who was going with me, my coworker, he got really, really sick. Oh. And uh, he has like internal bleeding or something. And it's... Golly. It, it like, it's something... I, I think it's like a reaction to the vaccination we needed oh, to get. Oh, it could be. Yeah, you guys have to get a lot of shots. Where was the uh, event going to be? In Nairobi. Kenya. Yep. Yeah, I think you even even if you go if you're going to West or East Africa, I think you still have to get a goodly number of uh, inoculations. Oh yeah, no, right? I got four of them all in wow. one <laughs> one wow. quarter inch square spot on my arm. And he did uh, not react well. It sounds like no, yeah. I'm no, sorry. he's not as, as tough as I am, but I hope he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, we uh, we wish you uh, the best. So I know. you don't. Ha I mean, are you shackled at the ankle? Is there a reason why you couldn't go? No, I could have gone, but the point of us doing this was we were going to shoot a bunch of video and stuff. And uh, um, there are going to be future events and possibly even in Africa, too. So 
We'll just do it again at some other time. Oh, Nairobi is cool. I'm jealous. Mm. I'd love to go. Well, and you yeah, know, by so the way, Rich, Rich was going to be the guy, except now you know here's Paul. So, so it's kind of nice. Come on, <laughs> Paul, come on with us. Now, sorry, now you're making me feel bad. Sorry, your big debut <laughs> is ruined. Uh, yeah. Oh, gosh, I had a oh, lower third ruined. made for you. And, oh no, I guess not. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so. So uh, I will welcome. go away again. I promise. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> okay. It's fine. Don't go away. We're, don't go away. We, we're happy to have you. <laughs> uh, all right. What was the yeah. What was the uh, Microsoft event there? I think it's called. Oh God, I've already forgotten the name. Next Africa. I think it's huh. that sound right. Something like that. You know, Next. It's, it's funny. I mean, Africa, a huge continent, many countries, yeah. uh, but you don't hear about a lot of tech conferences in Africa. Next tech. Excuse me. Next tech. Mm. Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking forward to it. Um, I've been to Africa, but not this part of Africa. And um, yeah, so here I am. I'm, you know, I was fully, I was packed. I was, you know, like li literally waiting, counting down the minutes to go. Oh, it was that close. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was right at the edge. Well, look and, at the, uh, this way. You could take the mosquito netting down in the house because yeah, yeah. you're safe. <laughs> you're inoculated. Actually, the best part is my wife has, my wife informed me that she made plans basically every single night this oh, week. Oh, so. yeah. You're going to be alone. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Yep. Oh, well. Oh, well. Sorry That's about that. Um, Windows 10 Cloud, item number one. Yeah, and this is Great. why we brought. This is why we still wanted Everich on today, right? Because um, yep. this is kind of an interesting topic. There's a lot of rumor and speculation. Um, curious what someone else thinks about this. I think we all have ideas about what this thing might be. Um, did so they, did they, was there that. a leak? Was there an announcement? It was a leak. So, yeah, there was a leak. Um, it, a couple of people were looking inside the code of some of the recent insider builds and SDK builds, and they saw references to something that said cloud and cloud N as additions of Windows 10, and we had never heard about those before. So then the game of hunting it down began, <laughs> and yep. <laughs> we all started pinging our sources and saying, "What? okay, what is this? Is this actually like something like streaming from the cloud? Is it like a new subscription plan? Uh, what is it? So my, I'll tell you what my sources said. Mine said, this cloud edition has nothing to do with the cloud. <laughs> Great. Yeah. It's Great. a perfect name. Perfect name. Yeah. Like it's just a name they're using. And um, it's more like if you think about Windows RT, it's more kind of like that. But why they're calling it cloud? I oh, I know. know because why? I know. I understand. Okay. Why? <laughs> um, it's if you were going to do a lightweight Chromebook competitor, and Microsoft has announced such things for education, uh, the cloud becomes very important because you don't have a lot of storage, right? That's the whole idea of the Chromebook. Um, mm -hmm. Many many users can share a single Chromebook. You just log onto your Google account, and there's your stuff's all visible. As and mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense to me. It's a cloud book. In fact, didn't there used to be such a thing as a cloud book? Remember that? Who yeah. did that? Those are pretty much netbooks. Yeah. They were netbooks. So so it's the return of the cloud book. Only this time with more Well, power. we don't know. I mean, I... I that seems that's reasonable, though, right? It it does. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I think of this as more aligned with the original vision for Windows RT, that... Microsoft knows that Windows needs to be taken into the 21st century and modernized, and that in order to make that happen, they have to drop this legacy cruft that's been holding it back. The problem with Windows, of course, is the legacy cruft is the only thing keeping it moving forward. So Windows RT was not ready. It was too slow. The hardware was too slow. Um, this thing you know, benefits from years of improvements. I don't think it's tied to ARM, right? It doesn't seem to be. Mm. Um, which is smart. I don't see why it would be. It's not, not right. RT in that sense, <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the defining characteristic of RT. It was an ARM-based version of Windows. But here's the thing. Once you once you look at something that isn't based on, RT, or, or on ARM, although could run on ARM, too, once you realize that on ARM, we do have the ability now, or will soon, to run Win32 apps, I think the big difference here is that you'll be able to upgrade this thing. I think that's the big but aside from just the normal, it's four or five years later and things are faster. It's Win32 not, apps on it's ARM not are just island. happening on high-end hardware, right? Starting with Snapdragon 835. 
So yeah, on ARM, on ARM, on ARM. But if yeah. this thing is running on Intel as well, it could be on anything, right? And I, I do believe yeah. that this is not um, necessarily just a low-end Chromebook kind of thing. I think it's uh, bigger than that. Hmm. Really? But anyway, I, I. But again, I think the big deal is you're uh, the problem with Windows RT. The problem with Surface RT in particular was it was a dead end, right? If you went down that right. route and discovered it didn't work for you, there was no way out of it. Mm. And I think that's one of the things that's changed since then. Um, Win32 app compatibility is a possibility. So this is a way to do this again and not trap users in that one-way street. I wonder if they're competing with Chromebooks. Um, Chromebooks are updated all the time. And yep. plus they're getting Android apps now. So Edge is updated twice a year, if we're lucky, with <laughs> yep. future updates. <laughs> yeah. you know? Once a year. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. They're going to position it against Chromebooks. That's something they need to think about. Well, did sure. they? Uh, sure. Maybe I mis misunderstood, but I thought that the um, recent education, Windows for Education releases were very Chromebook-like, right? Yeah, but I, you know, but see, that's the thing. I, I, I think these things are all kind of separate in a way, right? Not that anything that we just said about this is right or wrong or whatever. I mean, this could be all speculation. Be, yeah. Right. right. So in other words, Microsoft announced Windows on ARM, Windows 10 on ARM at the end of last year. Microsoft in the past couple of weeks announced a, a, an education initiative, just like Google did with Chromebooks, because there was an education show in the UK. Um, mm -hmm. Microsoft now, we've seen leak, they haven't announced it, but there are these leaks about this thing called Windows 10 Cloud. And we naturally want to connect the pieces here, like these things are all related. But they, it doesn't mean they're not, but it also doesn't mean that they are, right? Because my mm -hmm. knee-jerk reaction to Windows 10 Cloud, without even understanding what it is, is to think immediately of Windows 10 on ARM. And it's also to kind of think about Chromebooks, right? To see it as sort of a, you know, that kind of a thing. I mean, it, there is some controversy right now, right? About the way updates will be uh, uh, deferred going forward on all versions of Windows 10, except for Windows 10 Home, right? And so you could kind of make the argument that these lower end devices, which might run cloud, might run home, uh, could be stuck in that infinite up, date loop like not like Chromebook is not that it's stuck on Chromebook it works on Chromebook mm. um, but that that's part of the deal right they're always kept up to date um, but we have to we're kind of grasping aren't we like we're just yeah we're trying to connect things together yeah Windows 10 for education that version isn't is one of the ones that's going to be exempt from the always updating right like you can yeah. defer updates on that right, right so the question is one question is can you update can you will you be able to defer updates on this Windows 10 cloud or not? I wouldn't think so. But what, it, it's called Windows 10 Cloud. It's going to be. I know. Something that they update. Always often. on, right? Well, yeah, right. you don't yeah, even need on. to update. I mean, if you use a, well, you know, you know, I'm sure you all use Chromebooks. So you don't, you don't get a notice really unless you have to reboot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I'm curious if it will run, um, if you know, because we've heard Windows on ARM is going to have x86 emulation, right? But will this particular version of Windows support that or not? Or will Actually, it be and, UWP and related only? to that is, and I'm curious what both of you think about this. Um, we, we talk about like UWP apps running on this thing, right? Basically, is that mm -hmm. the idea? But is it UWP yeah. apps or is it store apps? And do store apps include right. Centennial apps? <laughs> I was and wondering the I same thing. I, I mean, Me that's a very important <laughs> distinction because um, I, I would argue mm. that this uh, this can't be UWP only. It can't be because if you give someone a computer and you say you can go to the store and download some of the apps, that is not a solution, right? That's a huge problem. Mm. It, I It has to run store apps across the board. And if that app is in the store, it has to work on the system. It has to. UWP would leave you without Windows 8 apps, which... Anything yeah. that hasn't been updated for UWP is in a pretty terrible state, but you yep. still need a Kindle app, um, whatever yep. else is in there. And you need Centennial apps. And I, I think, yeah. and that's the thing, you, you know, and that makes it very interesting. And that tells me that Win32 is on this thing. It's just cut off somehow that they're, they're, they've implemented something that I'm sure hackers will contravene that will prevent people from going to the web and downloading EXEs or installing them or whatever. I'm sure it's mm -hmm. some little block, something like that. And that, Right, makes yeah. this again, like I said, this is makes it. I think that's part of the rationale behind my thing, my statement earlier that mm. I think this thing will be upgradable. So it's not a dead end. It's not a one way street. And I think that's important mm -hmm. uh, because Windows RT. So many of those people, I think, felt betrayed after they got this thing. And they're like, this looks just like Windows, but it doesn't run Windows applications. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, 
You can't do People that. People would be confused. They 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 would ask me, oh, this yeah. thing says it uh, it runs on Windows Seven and better, but it doesn't work on yeah yeah my Surface. And so imagine, mm -hmm. so here it's like five years later or whatever, or whatever years, three or four years later. And they're going to do that again. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like that really sucked for people last time. Let's do it again. You know, it does, yeah. that doesn't that doesn't make sense, does it? I know. Yeah. Although, you know, when when my sources talked to me about what this is, they said, remember when my, Microsoft did that Windows 8.1 SKU with Bing? And so yeah. what that was was 8.1 with Bing preset as a search engine that users could change after they bought the PC. But the idea was give OEM something that's free the condition is Bing has to be set as the default search engine, and that's kind of the trade-off. It's like a marketing trade-off, um, mm -hmm. and it's meant to be kind of something more geared toward giving OEMs what they need, and then they pass that on to the consumer without charging them for the operating system more than they would if it was a higher-end, like a pro version. So, so why right. is it called Windows 10 Cloud? Right. <laughs> is why it is it literally called just Windows the, 10 Cloud? What, what, what is the, I mean, why? Like, what would be the point of that name? Well, it's better than Bing Edition. It is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. The other reason I thought of is, and that's one of our items in our show notes today, is we're going to talk about earnings and how all Wall Street wants to hear about is cloud anymore. So it could just be a nod to we're there cloud first. Yeah. Mobile first. <laughs> right. That's it does reason. sound like something that could compete with Chromebooks. Right. Yeah. They're all about internet connectivity. They, yeah. They so. have to stop running those Pawn Stars uh, commercials <laughs> out there and do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So other than that, I don't know why it's called cloud. I mean, Leo's first idea that it's because it'll make you store everything in the cloud makes sense if that is what this is, right? If yeah. if it's all your files have to be stored in the cloud and everything has somebody, to be in the somebody cloud. Somebody said the HP stream only had 32 gigs. I mean, yeah, yeah. we've had devices that only had 16, I think. I mean, yeah. they were, mm -hmm. you know, I I actually, as part of, I have an HP stream here. I spent four days just waiting for it to install updates uh, over the long weekend there. Um, it's just so, it's all, the experience is so terrible. Let's do that again. <laughs> you know, like I just, <laughs> I, it just seems weird to me. But that's why you would that have they would a go to this, those bad things from the past. But that's why you, you know? would call it Windows 10 Cloud. Yeah. You know, yeah. you'd you'd make it a different kind of experience. But mm -hmm. every time they've tried only allowing people to install apps from the store, it just hasn't worked, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. a low amount of storage means low end hardware, and yep. Win32 apps won't work on low end ARM chips. So, or at least yeah. not in the beginning, right? Right. So right. I just. I, I don't know. Maybe I just don't see the the path here. I don't think any of us are seeing the path here. Yeah. I, think that's, <laughs> I think that's kind of the problem. That's pretty it's, much it's, it. it's, it's especially if you understand what they did in the past. It's it's hard to reconcile what we've heard about this with the past. Like it just makes no sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What if? Let me throw this crazy idea. What if the on ARM you're going to be able to run x86 in emulation, but only if they're Centennial apps from, from the store. <laughs> that would <Sure>. make sense. <laughs> yep. That would make sense. But um, that x86 emulation isn't, it's going to start with the Snapdragon 835. Yeah. And then I, I assume right. that they'll work their way down to lower end chips over time, but that's going to be a while. Is it yeah. too late to bring back the Android bridge? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that really right. part of the problem is. Aside, technical issues aside, the Windows 10 store doesn't have all that much stuff that's, you know, no, exactly, exactly. And and I this is a that's a topic I return to again and again. Rich just mentioned it, too. I, I mean, it's kind of a wasteland. And um, over time, we, there there's a handful of good games now. There's, you know, Adobe Photoshop element showed up. That's actually really cool. It's a great deal, you know, compared to buying it outright from Adobe. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, I, there are, and then there are things like Office, which exists in that world, but it's, you know, like the toy version of Office. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to occur there. And I, this is the chicken egg issue, I think, with this thing, too. If it really is store apps, and let's be inclusive and say all store apps, Centennial, whatever, we're okay. still talking about a really small um, you know, number of apps, relatively speaking. I mean, Microsoft must have telemetry data showing what their users are using. I mean, I... I 
did someone the light bulb go off and someone said, "Look, all those people are using Star Apps. Let's make a <laughs> let's make another version of Windows that just runs Star Apps." You know, I, well, it's, well, it's but why do you think it has to just run Star yeah. Apps? What what is the because it's just I think not enough. One of the trying to force people to use Edge. That's my guess. Oh no, but why why are we saying that it only runs Star Apps? Right, this must be one of the. I mean, really. Uh, I mean, you could just say um, you've already got Office in the cloud. You could just say it's designed mm -hmm. like a Chromebook is to run sure. mm -hmm. uh, that kind of software, not installed software. Will it have a little plastic crank on the side so you can <laughs> <laughs> blow bubbles out the back? You know, I you tell like? people all the time to buy Chromebooks. They're cheap, they're reliable, sure. they're secure. And what most people do with a computer is not what you and I do. But they just yeah. they surf oh, right. the web and they get email and they do that on a web page. So... Uh, yeah. I think Microsoft could reasonably look at that and then look at that education market, which they're, mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it, they're in crisis now. Chromebooks are beating Windows in education. They look at yeah, the but, US. <clears throat> by the way, you're right. And I'm, and I'm sure that is the, the telemetry they see. I mean, I, I'm sure they, they, yeah. they have an understanding of what, what it is people do use. But, you know, the one app that doesn't run on this thing is Chrome, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> right. It, yeah. you could make a pretty good argument that if you get a Windows PC, it can do everything a Chromebook can do. Plus, you know, it's a PC, so it does all this other stuff. Right. I, I realize it doesn't have the simplicity and yeah, but that's necessarily yeah, that was the it. argument. And I don't, but but I, there is an argument. Yeah, um, that was the this argument. This one can't even run Chrome. So, like, what? Right. Mm -hmm. I, well, I that's know. the thing. You got to you got to make Edge be. You know, uh, Edge right. can run. Um, in theory, can't Edge run Firefox extensions? Which extensions can Edge? No, it doesn't. It have they have to all be custom made for? Didn't edge? they originally yeah. promise that it would though? I thought that was yes, it. Yeah. they did. And then and Pappy, Chrome, but, yeah, and Pappy yeah. was killed. Yeah, by, Chrome. It was Chrome. <laughs> okay. Yep. Well, so yeah, there's. I mean, really, that's what makes Chrome work on a Chromebook is all the Chrome extensions. If you could, right. that's what you need is access to those. There yep. are only a handful of Edge extensions yeah. right now. Yeah, but maybe they've got a yeah. secret plan. Yeah. This is the you know, the Windows Phone app problem all over again, because there will be people who say, well, it has all the basics and, and those things work fine. And that's probably true. But everyone has that thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And and for me, it's not like I use several Chrome extensions and I, I would only argue that a handful of them are, you know, mission critical. But it is that combination of these capabilities that makes this browser so great. You know, the part I'm the most curious about here actually is, and I saw Miriam Jouar said this today on Twitter. She said, um, "Yeah, so if this is the if this is the Chromebook competitor, it means Microsoft's figured out how to stop all the um, BS that keep people away from Windows because updating is too complex and spam and this and that." And I, I was like, you know what? What are, what are they going to do differently to make it feel like the management part of this is better? Yep. And less complex. Because that's what we really don't know, right? I mean, they Microsoft announced this new Intune for Education version mm -hmm. last week. But that's more like for IT administrators. We're talking about like normal people who who don't want to have to deal with all the things that right now mm -hmm. we have to deal with with Windows Update, right? Yep. Can they make that less complex? Because that's what also is a big selling point for Chromebooks. And I don't know yeah. what Microsoft has up their sleeve there. Well, hopefully it doesn't look just like look and work just like Windows 10, just like Windows RT. Yeah, that would be bad. Looked and yeah, lo Windows RT looked and worked like Windows 8, except you couldn't install certain apps, and that was one of many mistakes that they made with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Who's the guy who runs Steam? Gabe Tim Sweeney. Newell? Oh no, <laughs> Epic. No. Yeah, Gabe, oh, Gabe, Gabe Newell. Gabe Newell, I think. Gabe Newell yeah. Oh. He was like railing about this today uh, oh, somewhere. Gabe. I saw. No, I think that was Eric, I think it was Eric Sweeney. Was it uh, Sweeney? Was Eric Gabe Sweeney? Was Sorry. Frame too. Sorry. Okay. Oh, they're both. They're like a tag team. They're, they are that, kind but. of rant rant tag yeah. team. Sweeney right called it Windows 10 Crush Steam Edition. Sure. Right. What? So. Sure. Yeah. yeah, because the thing that won't run any games is the thing that's going to kill the games. No gamer <laughs> buys. <laughs> no, come on. You don't buy a Chromebook to play games uh, either. He's been talking about this since. Last July, something like that. Yep. Oh, goofy! That's so. just goofy. Sorry. He can't give up on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's really, <laughs> he's like the uh, like the dog at the end of the street that won't stop barking. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, he laid out a five-year plan last time about how Microsoft was going to gradually kill Steam. So <laughs> right. obviously, School this is part of that plan. Schools don't want a, a computer that can play Steam. 
<laughs> one, of the, one of the reasons they use Chromebooks is you can't run Minecraft on it, you know? Um, all right, well. Anyway, I, yeah. fun speculating with you kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else can we tell you what we don't know about? What, know, just out really of curiosity, really this is all based on what? One line in a, in a, in a... Well, no, yeah, actually, can we, do we know, yeah. what's the list of things we know about this? Like, what do we actually know? Like, why are we saying okay. all this stuff? We know that inside of some of the recent Insider builds, there is a list of the different versions of Windows 10, and it's listed as cloud, and there's also a cloud N. So, you know, the N version is the one without also, media right? player. Sorry? Wasn't there a cloud retail also? Cloud OEM, oh, cloud retail? Yeah. Okay, was there? Yep. So, yeah, so, oh, so it is literally a, pr a product edition then, right? It's just like Windows 10 Pro, just like Windows 10 Home. Yep, education, okay. right. Yep. Okay. Yep. And that's all we know for sure at this that's point. <laughs> yeah. The hell are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well, sources are blathering, so we'll we'll find out. I mean, I I bet we're going to find out pretty soon because if this is mentioned in Creators Update, I would think they're going to have to tell us by the time Creators Update comes out. Right? Do you think they'll release it around that time? Hmm. I would think you would. you would. Otherwise, why would these be listed in there? And I, I do like builds. I do like the name uh, Windows 10 Crush Steam Edition. I really like that. Yeah, I, do too. <laughs> I think they should go with that. I think it's like a like a Siri type thing. You should be able to name it. You know, like whatever you want. <laughs> yes, boss. <laughs> That's what Siri calls me, boss. <laughs> Lisa made Siri call her goddess of the universe, which I thought was wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even Siri was slightly taken <laughs> back by that one. My goodness. Oh. <laughs> well, well. Uh, let's, uh, now that we spent 15 minutes obsessing on something that <laughs> is just well, a lie. That's what we do, Leo. Yes, I know. <laughs> <This> is, <laughs> I know. You know, when you get to these uh, these uh, fallow periods in the, in the news cycle, yeah. Yeah. pretty much yeah. grasp it. Any straw comes your way. Sure. Much. No, we got other so stuff. So we were going to have Rick, Rick, uh, Rich leave after this, but if, if you're willing and have the time... Maybe you should stick around for the... You, you could stay you know, as long as you want. Fact, yeah, I mean, Rich, I mean, I'd be glad I'd, to get rid of these other guys and just have... Yeah, I, no, I, I know. I know. Sure. You want to stick around? All right, good. Yeah. All right. Yeah, good. Well, take a break. Yeah. Uh, as you may have been informed, we do very, very long commercials on this show. <laughs> and uh, this is enough time for you to go downtown, get a Starbucks coffee, and uh, come back. No, just... <laughs> Don't do that, please. Our show today brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. This is a fast ad for a fast product, the fastest way to get loan approval. It comes to you from the best mortgage lender in the country, Quicken Loans. Uh, just take a look at the website, quickenloans.com slash windows, and you'll see all those J.D. Power customer satisfaction awards year after year after year. And I love it because Quicken Loans decided we want to do a product for you for the geeks and they came here in windows weekly because they know well if you're listening to windows weekly you're the perfect person for this product they call it rocket mortgage because it's fast it's 21st century it's uh it's a completely online process and and friction free transparent I, any more adjectives i can throw at it here's the deal you could be at an open house and you could say you know we weren't thinking of buying a house but i like this house do you think we can get a loan and you can go to quickenloans.com slash windows, answer a few simple questions. You get some sliders. You can slide the term of the loan and the rate and all that, customize it so it's just so, and get approved almost instantly, within minutes. Uh, you can submit any, you know, you, you might say, as I did, well, what, you know, don't you need, like, you know, paste stubs or something or bank statements? Yeah. But you submit those online, too. I mean, the whole thing is boom, 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 easy peasy. And you, and you can say, you can actually say to the realtor, look, I'm approved. That makes a big difference when you're buying. If you're refining, and now's a good time to refi as interest rates start to ratchet up. They're supposed to, uh, according to the Fed. This would be a great time to go to quickenloans.com slash windows. When it comes to the big decision, choosing a mortgage lender, somebody you're going to have a 30-year relationship with, it's important to work with someone you can trust who has your best interest in mind. That's Quicken loans quickenloans.com slash windows equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states nmls consumer access.org number 3030 rocket mortgage by quicken loans check them out quickenloans.com slash windows we're talking about windows as we do every week with paul Thorot, mary joe foley and joining us today from neowin 
Rich Woods. What's your title, Rich? You're the editor in chief, the boss, the big Senior guy. Senior editor for North America. Senior editor for North America makes it sound like quite an international operation. <laughs> Well, it is. Well, it is. It is. Over in Europe. <laughs> is, was Neil, is, I, I, is it was Neil Wynn started in in London, in England, or is it American? No. no, no, it's an American company. Okay. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the quarterly results, we had Apple's uh, amazing quarterly results yesterday. Oh, are they still around? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I heard that they're still uh, they're still in business. The iPad's not doing all that well. Do they sure. still sell the iPhone? That iPhone, <laughs> 78 and a half million units last quarter. And it kind of shocked me because I was, along with a lot of people, really disheartened that the new iPhone 7 didn't have a headphone jack. But you know, uh, that didn't slow that down sales. <laughs> has seen sales fall quarter, year yeah, over year big, for big three sales. straight years now. Yeah, I think it's time drop. for Tim Cook to put up a little apology to Mr. Therat as he made fun of me because <laughs> I he? said Did he? that it Aww. wasn't the next big thing. <gasps> No, I think you're wrong, Paul. It is the next big thing. It's just that everybody who wanted one has one. Okay, so here's what I think. What do you <laughs> think, Paul? The next big thing is actually the services that run on top of iPhone because iPhone is their only business. And you're exactly right. $24 billion revenue in services. It was their second biggest yep. earner. Um, yep. The watch... They said had the best quarter ever. However, <laughs> sure. they didn't say how many it sold. So Leo, that's using Surface Mac. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> um, you know, compared to last quarter, we went gangbusters. Ooh, so how did you do last yeah. quarter? Yeah, we're not talking. No. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, iPad sales down. Mac sales kind of even. Actually, uh, as PC sales start to kind of a little bit recover, Apple's now dropped, I think, to the, they're the number five PC manufacturer, if you include Windows machines. Yeah. Um, Nevertheless, they yeah, I know we do. Because why not? Uh, yeah, Dell's, what is it? HP, Dell. Well, I think it's actually Lenovo. Lenovo, HP, Dell. HP, Dell. Acer slash Asus. Acer, Asus went up, beat, then beat uh, Apple for the first time, I guess. Something like that. Huh. But they made a lot of money. They made yep. a lot of yep. money. They, uh, they, they, I always looked at the tax rate, because my tax rate's like almost 50%. <laughs> uh, and uh, Apple's tax rate twenty six percent. Sure. Yeah, I always I, I always wonder how they did that, and if I could. I get think the a, biggest, a Irish uh, most interesting number in some ways with these companies is the amount of cash or cash like assets they have on hand. Yeah. Versus mm -hmm. the amount they have in the United States. Right. <laughs> it's and always like ninety five percent of it is always somewhere yeah. else. And that, there's a close correlation between that and their tax rate. I might add. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. They did. They bought that two hundred billion dollars in stock. Now they're they're, they're continuing right. that buyback. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, that's Apple. This is not the Apple podcast, but I just <laughs> say that so you can compare that with Microsoft's right. quarterly earnings. Well, uh, there are numbers so in both. They had a good quarter. They had a good. They had quarter a very good too. quarter, right? <laughs> yeah. Twenty four point one billion um, earnings per share beat right. eighty three cents. Um, the surprise to me in Microsoft's second quarter um, was that Windows did the Windows, you know, more personal computing segment did better than people were expecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was weird. I, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It beat the market, yeah. in other words. In other words, uh, both yeah. I think uh, was, business yeah. and consumer and OEM versus PC maker they all rose about five percent, yeah. roughly. You know, which they is not what you see in the PC market at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, the things that didn't do so well, uh, phone, 81% <laughs> down. <laughs> to be fair, that was according to plan. It was. It will go down more next quarter to. again. Yep. 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 It yeah. will. So but there's, you know, they're trying to get out of the zero, phone business. Yeah. yeah. They're trying to get to At zero point, pretty much. Yeah. It gets to below zero and then they start right. making money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Surface was down a couple points. Um, well, actually, by the way, I consider that to be a success story because uh, the products yeah. that are their primary products today were sure. launched 15 months ago. This is the first time ever that a year has gone by and they haven't had something to replace their core products. So right. they're selling these things that are essentially previous gen mm -hmm. and it only fell, what, what you say, 2%, right? Yeah, um, 2%. That's incredible. I mean, that's actually really good. Yeah. Xbox console sales down, prices of those down. Right. But yeah. digital transactions up to a billion for the quarter in that space. So yeah. that's good. That's their version of Apple services Point. story, right? You've got these this dedicated audience mm -hmm. and now they're buying stuff digitally instead of going to the yeah. store and buying discs. 
I'm yep. surprised by Xbox. I, they man, they push that thing so hard. Um, yeah. No, uh, November, December. Mm. Tough, tough market for that. Yep. But you know where all where Wall Street is watching the closest is what they're doing with the office division being um, the the thing that they call commercial cloud, which is now a, a 14 billion annual run rate. Um, on its way to the promised 18 billion or, or is it no 20 billion by next year. So they say they're growing according to plan there. So that's like office 365, Azure dynamics, 365, uh, power BI, all those cloud services that are for businesses. And that's Sorry, Mary growing. Jo, is it okay. office 365 or office 365? <laughs> right. That came up in the earnings call, didn't it? Did it really? <laughs> that's how Satya Nadella says it. Well, and yeah. I, I, I he based on my three, six, five. Yeah, I, 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 what, I've, what I'm getting is that that's how British people say it, and uh, <laughs> I get it, but I don't think anyone refers to um, the <laughs> Xbox 360 or the release known as Office 2016, <laughs> so... Um, Paul, get with the program. All right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, so yeah, I mean, those are the numbers Wall Street cares about. It's funny, they just, like, when you listen to the earnings calls... They almost never ask Microsoft about Windows. It's all about, yeah. what about Azure? What about Office yeah, 365? Cloud. What about cloud? What about, you know, this and how are you comparing to AWS? Which they don't actually say, but um, that's all they care about. Like when you well, talk Windows to somebody kinda, from Wall Street. It kind of chugs eh, along, doesn't it? I mean, it's it it's right. kind of interesting. Yep. Um, the, I mean, the thing that, that, that personal sorry. computing segment is still the biggest part of Microsoft's business revenue-wise. It still is. Yeah, but well, it's because they not dump the so much biggest, stuff in it. <laughs> it's yeah, like, and it's not the like biggest the profitability. For, right, yeah. everything is in there, I know. Yep. There were some weird little tidbits too, um, and I, I, yeah. I think these were from the conference call, if I remember correctly, but uh, 65 million Android and iOS uh, mm -hmm. active users for Office Mobile, right, which is kind of impressive. Mm -hmm. Um, no. And then this is kind of a weird one. Uh, Sachin Nadella said that users have asked Cortana over 18 billion questions to date. Uh, how <laughs> <laughs> or why? <laughs> I mean, like, what does that even mean? You know, so. it has they, to count when you type things, right? It can't just be. And then, the important question is, how do I turn this stupid thing off? Yeah, did they mention how many answers were? Uh, issues? Yeah, I mean, that would be more <laughs> relevant. Yeah, 18, 18 billion, billion questions. questions. Really, seriously, uh, marketing-wise, uh, better to say 18 billion answers. I'm just saying. <laughs> Microsoft's um, oh. earnings are this cloud of facts, and they they, they just kind of pull a full a few of them, up, and it's it, they don't they don't really seem to string together. Uh, You're seeing if anybody reads it. Yeah. <laughs> sure, it includes anybody that set it off by accident. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is that thing asking me? <laughs> you know, it's like, why is it talking to me? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it was. They had a good quarter. Um, yeah. Well, the big thing, Paul, right, Paul, is the cloud, intelligent cloud. I think it was Azure was yeah. almost doubled uh, year over year. But we uh, don't know what that number is. By we the way, don't know what that number is? That's what. Yep. Yeah, no. Absolutely. <laughs> it's doubled. Uh, we don't know to what from what. We have no idea. Yeah. yeah. There's all this stuff at Microsoft that just kind of chugs along, like even the server products, like on-prem servers. I um, know. We're up. You know, like it's just yeah. 2017 people like I'm going to go down to Fry's Electronics and buy an exchange <laughs> license for seventeen thousand no. dollars or something. You know, it's, that is so funny because they don't want to talk about that part of the business very much because, again, they're trying to get everybody focused on what they're doing going forward and future and cloud. Right. But I, I get to talk to them a little bit about this, the the on-prem stuff and they're like, yeah, like Windows Server 2016 killed it. But they amazing. didn't really talk about that a lot in earnings. But that's that gave them some really good uh, growth for the quarter because that's when that product was launched. Yeah, it's so that, kind of, right. Yeah, it's very strange. Yep. Is Xbox yeah. Live grew fifteen percent? Yep. yep. I have to wonder about that. Fifteen uh, percent to fifty-five million. I mean, um, they released the solitaire collection for iOS and Android. <laughs> I want <laughs> the, the material uh, connection there. <laughs> from these mobile games, you know? That's amazing. <laughs> 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 that could be. I, yeah. It could be. I mean, they're not talking about Xbox Live Gold, 55 million. No, no, they're not. Right. Yeah. Yep. All right. We, that's it, huh? 
Just, well, <laughs> there's actually, there's one more thing I wanted to right. discuss with this. This is something Mary Jo and I discussed privately and I wrote about because I'm just, this is something like not quite every quarter, but at least twice a year, I kind of come back to this. Microsoft will or will not release figures for Office 365 subscribers. I think of Office 365 as like the poster child for this transformation that Microsoft keeps talking about that they're making because it was a product that was on-prem and, you, you know, distributed in a very traditional way. And now it's this online service that people subscribe to and businesses subscribe to. And so the size of that user base indicates in some ways how healthy that thing is, how quickly the transformation is happening. And I always feel like the numbers are really small, relatively speaking, right? Because Microsoft used to talk about Office being a 1.2 billion user base product. Like that's how many active users there were in the world at one time. I don't know if that's true anymore. Um, I'm going to do this off the top of my head because I don't have the exact numbers and they don't actually release the exact numbers every quarter. But I believe the numbers from this past quarter were 85 or 86 million on the commercial side, meaning for businesses and 25 million for consumers. So roughly what is it? 110, let's say 110 million or less than 10% of the one time size of the entire office user base have moved to office 365. And I guess the question there is, is that good? Mm. You know? And I, mm -hmm. the one little asterisk I'd put next to it that kind of suggests that it's not maybe as terrible as I would think at first blush is these uh, subscribers represent ongoing revenues, right? They're not a one-time right. purchase. Right. The problem with Windows 10 right. is that those guys are a revenue suck because if they ever need support, it's all over. When you basically promise to support and update this thing forever, which I realize isn't the literal promise, but basically... You know, your chances to monetize that user on Windows 10 are very small, which is why they're doing so many screwy things with Windows 10. You know, Windows, or Office rather, Office 365, you're getting 69 or 99 or 125 or whatever it is, depending on what kind of account they have, uh, that much money from each user every single year. So it's a, it, it is a different kind of a product. But doesn't, but it still seems kind of small, doesn't it? Mm. Given the massive business user base they have out there yeah i you know yeah. it, they get asked a little bit about this on the conference call and they talked mm -hmm. about um how they're trying to grow this and they said one way we're trying to grow this number is by continuing to add new applications to office 365 and they cited that new staff hub application that yep. they just added yep. recently and they're trying to grow the higher uh, the more feature complete and more expensive versions of Office 365. So they got asked about E3 and E5, and they said right now E3 is doing great, E5 still early days. Those are the really expensive versions of Office 365. So I think that they're not so focused on seats as they are on price in growing okay. this part of the business right now. Right. I would, I'd like to see the price comparisons, like, you know, how much are they making off of Office through the subscription plans, Office 365 versus how they used to sell it in the old olden times, you know, that would be an interesting number. Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's a tough sell for individuals because most people are probably mm -hmm. used to just getting it for free on a computer. <laughs> I know it's not technically free, right. but yeah. most individuals are just using maybe Word, Excel, PowerPoint and the what is it? The home and student edition of Office only costs yeah. about one hundred and twenty dollars. Right, right. Yeah. Which is a little more than a year of Office 365. Right. Right. It was funny. Paul said, it doesn't everyone who's home buy Office 365 if they <laughs> buy it um, for OneDrive. I'm like, no, I buy it for Outlook. He's like, you're weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, God, I would pay extra not to have Outlook. But I, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I the funny thing, Office 365 is tough. It's, it's a little bit like VR in, in the sense that you need to, really kind of explain to someone and show them why this thing is valuable. And I think if you can make have that conversation, they might come around to it. Um, but I think most people just, you know, they get the little freebie for a year maybe, and that maybe they use it, maybe yeah. they don't. And then it comes time to renew and they're like, wait a minute, you want me to pay for this thing? You know, I, I, I that must happen. I mean, we'll, they'll never yeah. say this. I mean, they'll never tell yeah. us, right, what the retention yeah. rate is, but uh, I, we know there are, what, 250 to 300 million PCs sold a year over the past several years, and a bunch of them came with that little freebie. And there's only 25 million consumers that are using this thing. Right. It's crazy. Well, that's a good point, huh? 
Now, yeah. when that puts it in perspective, yeah. Mm -hmm. I still find them. I'll, I'll I go to box yeah, up an old the PC and all the, little, the little certificate yeah. is sitting. Yeah. There. <laughs> you know? yeah. Hmm, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. It's a gray area. It does I, put no that number in, answer. You know, right? a little. It makes it sound a little worse. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. I really don't know what to think about it. Yeah. I just. I guess what I keep thinking is it should be bigger. Yeah. The number. Uh, I mean, by the way, the that Windows 10 build is indeed. Yep, it's out as we speak. Oh, One no. five zero two five. Go get it, everyone. Oh my God. God. Well, actually, not everyone. There's a little warning I just saw in the post. If you're if you have a 32-bit version of Windows 10, you Jeez. aren't going to be able to use this. <laughs> oh. But if you have 64-bit, you're okay. <laughs> that was an issue with the last builds when there was uh, there installation was problems. Yeah. Thirty, yeah, 32-bit yeah. versions. Yeah. And actually, looking at the notes, I will say the the big thing that has occurred with this build is that there are no big things. Like for the past, that was three or four builds, at least three builds. It's, yeah. They've been massive with lots and lots of A changes. Lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, this one is not like that. So maybe this thing is winding down finally. It should be. It's about time. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it seems like we should be getting to that point. Yeah. I think we'll get an RTM like next month, maybe, right? March? Yes. An April yeah. We're not allowed to yep. say yep. it, yep. but RTM. <laughs> well, we don't use the term word. RTM. <laughs> right. <But> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Braille support in Narrator is in this build, though. And I, you know what? We have a lot of people who've asked about Braille. I have, anyway, in my reader base. So this is interesting. Yep. This made it in. But otherwise, yeah. Fixes, fixes, fixes. Lots yeah. of fixes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's where we should be. Yeah. Feedback yeah. hub. Mm -hmm. Nightlight improvements. Nightlight improvements. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> the thing formerly called blue light, right? Nightlight now. Right, right. Yep. Because it's not blue so, light. It's the opposite of blue light. It's turn off right. the blue light. Right. They called it blue yeah. light? Now it's called night Originally, light. Originally, yeah. I think Kmart went yeah. after them, saying you can't call it. By the way, <laughs> um, Donna's uh, tweet about this build, the URL, they, you know, they do the eight, they built the um, URL shortener, yeah, aka oh, yeah. Dot .ms slash okay. get well Brad. Nice. You're kidding. Yeah, no. that's good. That's, it's the, that's Donna Sakar, that's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, uh, mm -hmm. is, I mean, it does sound serious. Is it, mm. it could be, yeah. Oh, dear. Everyone wish him the best. Oh, I just, uh, this is interesting. Here, this just in. I just opened Chrome on uh, Windows 10, and I'm getting a pop-up that says Microsoft Edge is safer than Chrome. It blocks 13% yeah. more socially engineered malware. <laughs> You're not still using Learn Chrome, Leo, so, are you? Look at this. So the benefit little, of little Windows 10 Cloud here. is that you don't see those advertisements. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got rid of those ads. Nice. <laughs> Look at that. Ad-free <laughs> if you go cloud. Oh, and if you click it, look what happens. Edge just launches. Isn't that sweet? Sure. We'll just, we'll just make it the default. Is that okay? It is good. Okay, oh, thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye. Um, God, I don't even know if that that stat makes any sense at all. It says Microsoft Edge blocks 99% socially engineered malware compared to 86% for Chrome and 78% for Firefox. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'll just have to take their word for it. I don't, <laughs> I don't know where that number comes from, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, Edge is actually uh, fine. It's just you know, out of the, I'm out of the habit of using it because they <laughs> Edge, didn't do anything. Uh, can else. actually be used to browse the web. It I'm can not be saying used you can't. To I browse just... the web now. It's good news. Yep. Yep. It's good news. Um, do you want to say anything more about the new build? Anything at all? No. no, I think that's yeah. that's pretty Not much, much it. To say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's listen. That's but good. At this point, that's, that's, that's good. good. That's what you want. <laughs> I yeah. see a note here uh, saying Microsoft provides more details about Edge improvements in the Creators Update. Is that? Yep. And you literally just said everything that we need to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, because we, we, we knew get, it we, is getting better. We knew the about update. these, right? I yeah. think we mentioned yeah, these fact, last week, I, right? I, I went through this whole thing expecting to find out maybe one little tidbit and literally <laughs> this is all, yeah, it's all just previously understood information. Okay. Right. Right. All right. 
Yeah, because um, last week most they... of it by the time I figured it out, and I was like, okay, screw it. I them. already yeah. wrote that. I'm not going to use the eraser. Yep. Yeah, last last week they they did have a new um, test build one five zero one nine, and that's that's this uh, post they did right. about Edge repeated some of those features that were enabled in yep. that build. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the new that privacy build, settings are in that build, right? That's the one you're having trouble with, right, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, day to day, it's fine. It's just when I use Skype. Hmm. Does it, do, doctor to patient? <laughs> Does it hurt? Yeah, yeah, Only exactly. when I use Skype. But it stop <laughs> using Skype. Mm-hmm. You guys, though, should you, Paul and Paul. And Rich should talk about the gaming stuff that was new in <laughs> one five zero one nine because there was a ton of it. Don't rush him. We'll get to that. Yeah, there's quite a bit. Yeah. Take a break. Relax. Enjoy. Take a load off. We use uh, Amazon Web Services. It gives us all sorts of load balancing ad- advantages. For companies to succeed in this modern age, you need a lot of tools. And I remember, not so very long ago, <laughs> that you had to roll it yourself. Right? If you wanted to do a startup, it was a lot of work to create a startup. Remember uh, Kevin Rose when he started Dig, and how excited he was. They bought a new server, and he had to go down to the the, the colo to install the server and get and provision it and get it up and running. And he was like, "Oh, this is so exciting! I went. It's in the cage. Now you just flip a switch and let Amazon Web Services do all the heavy lifting. It's awesome." It provides, of course, a robust and scalable platform for builders of every stripe, so you can innovate quickly. It has twice the compliance certifications, the largest global footprint of any other cloud vendor. They do the heavy lifting, so builders like you can focus on what they do best. Amazon Web Services AWS provides the most comprehensive set of features for builders, releasing new features at a faster rate than anyone else. 1,000 new features last year alone. Services support virtually any cloud workload, including, yes, Windows. Uh, More than 70 services, ranging from compute to storage to networking, database, analytics, application services, deployment management, and mobile. By listening to builders' needs and wants, AWS has been adding more capabilities than anyone else. AWS Storage Solutions designed to deliver secure, scalable, and durable storage for business and businesses looking to achieve efficiency and scalability within their backup and recovery environments without the need for an on-prem infrastructure. Widest global reach of any cloud provider and allows you to choose which region your data resides to minimize latency and costs, as well as to address regulatory requirements. We've got, we got to be aware of that now, right? Some countries require your their data be stored in that country. AWS can handle that. You have complete control of your data. With AWS, startups scale like enterprises, and enterprises can be nimble as startups. Whether you're new to AWS or you have experience with AWS, they want to give you the right resources to support their success and help you do amazing things. And that's why they've created the AWS Podcast. You can find out more at podcast.aws. Podcast.aws. It's the new AWS Podcast, which is really a cool idea. And it works on Edge, right? Yes. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> Podcast.aws. We thank uh, Amazon Web Services, not only for their support with the ad, but also, frankly, for keeping us up and running all the time. All right. Moving right along. You want to do Surface before we do the, the fun stuff? You got to do, uh, you got to, you got to eat your meat before you have your pudding. <laughs> so actually surface is super quick because it doesn't really require much discussion i'm surprised so. brad you're using a surface pro 3 <laughs> you just like the old st- old stuff yeah you know um i bought a new desktop computer that i was using and uh i made the mistake of buying brand new pc right before ces oh dear so so I returned it. Now I'm just kind of using this. I get it. I get it. So you're yeah. just waiting till a new one comes. Right. What'd you get? I haven't pre-ordered. Uh, Alienware Aurora. Yeah. Nice. The <laughs> GTX 1080. You know, I was yeah. we were talking about this yesterday on MacBreak Weekly, uh, that a lot of Mac Pro users, editors, photographers and stuff, are buying, because they can't get the Mac hardware they want now, they're buying gaming machines from the PC side. Like the Razer or the Alienware, 
because they've got the high end. You know, you get a laptop with a with a GTX 1080 in it, things like that. So, yeah. but you're, I'm sure, more of a gamer. That's why you're getting it, right? <laughs> yeah, I do enjoy shooting things on the weekends. Well, you're in good company because Mary Jo, you ought to see her. Just on the duty. weekends? <laughs> you guys should see me. Yeah, you should. She is. She's a killer. Stone Cold kill. You know, Mary Jo likes to do. She likes to camp with a rocket launcher and just yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's a, a noob tubing camper. She's a noob tuber. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, um, all right. So nothing to say about Surface. The uh, new Surface uh, Pro. One of the new Surface Pro configurations is uh, discounted right now, right? Yeah. So just quickly, I, uh, geez, I don't remember which one it is, but I, the Core i5, probably four gig, 128 version is 20% off. It's about $200 off why, right why now. Why is that, I wonder? I think they're just getting rid of inventory, honestly. I think yeah. this is in preparation for the coming refresh, and they're looking at what they have, and, and you know, they've had these weird little sales uh, for a little while now, so... Um, a little light anyway. on RAM, right? Can you upgrade? Can you still get the discount? No, if you upgrade it, you lose the, the sale price, which is oh. crazy, right? So it's a pre-built. In other words, they have these things built right. ready to ship. So in a uh, way, they're acknowledging we're not selling a lot of these 4 gig RAM guys. Well, or we have what you know, we have them. I think that what they're saying is we have these things in stock right. and we need to get rid of them. You know? So if I jump up to... Yeah, if you try to configure it, you won't see the $200 yeah, price. Yeah, it goes away yeah. right away. Oh, yep. That's a, hey, you can also do that thing where it says, well, I don't know what it says, but it says... Configure, add to cart, and then modify. If you do that, you don't get the... Yeah, you yeah. don't get it. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else? Um, the other one was that uh, Rich's Surface Pro 3 just got a surf, uh, firmware update. Um, right. <laughs> right before the show. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Nice. right, right in, the, in the dying minutes of uh, January. Yeah. <laughs> Those what some Miracast fixes. Actually, yep. that's yep. good because it means they're still supporting that thing fully, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. That's it. <laughs> that's <laughs> not really much more to say. Yeah. All right, happened, all right. Let's, let's, get, let's get to the, the meat. Mary Jo, if you want to take a break, <laughs> <laughs> you can snooze off because here comes Xbox. <laughs> All right, so what Mary Jo was alluding to some game and gaming related improvements in the creators update, right? Do you, Rich, did you want to mm -hmm. discuss that stuff or sure. it's not in the notes? Well, I apologize. I, <laughs> oh, so this is but this is this thing we've been talking about the gamers edition, game, whatever it's game mode. Is that what you're talking right. about? Yeah. There's game mode, there's the built in beam streaming, which mm -hmm. still isn't available on the Xbox previews yet, right? Uh, yeah, it's a new gaming section in settings. Uh, Have you played with this at all? I mean, I, I, I've turned it on. I, 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 I don't yeah, know that I, I've I noticed anything. I, Even though apparently it's on by default when you yeah. boot it up the first time. Even though it's says it's off. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I haven't really played with it too much. Yeah, I'm not sure. What, I, it, I, it's almost feels like a, uh, a fake. Of, like I, I checked a box, and so it feels <laughs> like it's faster now. You know. Right. Um, it seems faster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, I don't know. We'll see that more uh, when we get closer to the creators update, I guess. But um, so, see, so, uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Mary Jo, uh, I apologize because I can't turn this <laughs> your face off in this triple box. <laughs> so can you just like freeze the shot? So it's just yeah. Normally, what I do is like I take Mary Jo off screen so you can nap. Like but no, uh, I'm, I'm listening. Mary Jo has I'm perfected listening. the art of sleeping with her eyes open. Yeah, I have. I have. Now, you know, I, I actually, so I, I'd like to interject here something because <laughs> you guys always joke about me not caring about gaming, but I'll tell you what, I don't care about gaming. That's true. Um, <laughs> nice. But I um, found this presentation today, in fact, uh, about things that Microsoft's telling its PC makers to focus on with developing new devices for t right. calendar 2017 and especially holiday 2017. And so a big theme is mixed reality. Another big theme is gaming and media. People who are media fanatics are telling PC makers to build specialized devices for these people. So I can't totally ignore gaming. I understand that. Like this is a mission for Microsoft. They're telling partners to go build these kinds of devices. So do you I have to keep I mean, can you imagine an ear the, being the guy from the PC maker in the meeting with yeah. Microsoft where they right. roll out this presentation and say, here's what you should be building. You know, yeah. like, I don't know about you guys, but my response to this would have been like, 
<laughs> Thanks. Yeah, we don't know anything <laughs> about our market. Uh, this is great information, though. You guys are the best. I mean, I, no, I, you know what? It just seems kind of <laughs> condescending in a way. I mean, no, I mean, I think, I think, you know, at WinHack, they're saying to them, okay, you guys have your ideas about what you want to build, and great, go build it. But if you want us to tell you <laughs> mm -hmm, where right. we think there's money and where we're going to give you marketing dollars, yeah, we're going to tell yeah, you yeah. where we're going to give you marketing dollars, right? Oh, so, okay. yeah, gaming PCs, right. they said it. It's like if you are building a gaming PC, we're going to help you sell the heck out of it this year. No. Oh, so, okay. I have to They're listen doing to that, gaming. That's for sure. Yeah. I have to listen because of these kind of things. So I'm I'm not totally tuned out on Xbox. I think your next PC what? is going to be a gaming PC. Do you? Huh? Hmm. No, but you never know. Mm -hmm. It could heat your apartment. <laughs> I was more excited. They also told them to go build things like Ultra Slims, um, which I'm yeah. way more interested in, like that HP that I use all the time. I, I mm -hmm. love that device. So I'm I'm glad they're telling them to go build more of those too. Not just gamer, gaming PCs. Yep. Right. So that's why I'm listening, even though I look like I might not be listening. <laughs> See, she does pay attention. I do. It's well, I, and I, on that note, I will just let you know that when you talk about things like data lakes, I am literally not paying attention. <laughs> I, you should, Paul. I just, <laughs> you should, my friend. He wakes Your up in the middle of the Don't believe him. He wakes up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat Hadoop. shouting Hadoop. These are like... Like the Manchurian candidate code words, yeah. you know, that uh, they snap me off yeah. in this case. Triggers him. <laughs> All of a sudden. I do. I do. I do. What would be your Manchurian candidate code word? That's a, That would be. Me? It would yeah. be uh, Linux on Windows. Oh. Bash. Bash shell. Bash shell. Bash shell. Skype. Yeah, Skype. Just Skype. Skype. It's the Skype sound. Skype. That do, sound do. that Skype makes. Yeah. Do, do, do. yeah. Like. Just, dun, dun. The knife comes out. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Anything else to say? I mean, that was pretty brief. I think we could do more on gaming. Just, yeah. yeah. Right, so actually, I'm curious what you think about this because this is something you would have paid attention to. <clears throat> Mary Jo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a... <laughs> Xbox has had a preview program since I think when the Xbox One first came out. It goes back a few years at least. Um, it's... It's been like an invite only kind of deal. And there was a short period of time where I think members could invite other people and then those expired and that was the end of that. Um, when that group was brought into Terry's org and then last year they started talking about they're going to invite everyone in and they're, they're talking have, about merging gonna, the Xbox yep. preview program and the insider program. Yeah. But they're not, unless I'm missing something, and please tell me <laughs> I'm wrong about this. They're not really doing the same thing they do on Windows, right? Like on no, Windows, you can no. sign up, you can pick what you're going to be in, and then you're there. Right. And on Xbox, yeah. it's like this. It's so. It just. It feels like a country club where no one's invited. <laughs> you know. But, right. Yeah. Am I right? So I, four I, rings. I, yeah. Pretty much. I okay. mean the 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 preview ring four, which is the bottom one, is is pretty much like release preview on the Windows Insider right. program. So you if that. you want to test out the creators update, you have to be invited. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you See, can like also that. be I, uninvited. Oh, you can be uninvited. Even better. Yeah. If you're not active as an Xbox insider, they can tell <sighs> you that you can't be part of this ring anymore. What does it take to be an active Xbox insider? Quests, surveys, um, polls. That's, are you like one? That. Yeah. Yeah. Are so you I, one, I'm supposed one. to be in yeah. it, but I don't I'm see the updates. He's you know? like the leader. Right. So can't you invite so, Paul? <laughs> no, well, I'm, no, I'm I don't think you can invite it. people for this. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, and they also, um, they also just released that preview for the beta ring as well. Right, right. So, have you seen this month or this week even like new stuff? Yourself? This week? No. No. I mean, okay. I got the creators update preview last week. Okay. Because no. I've I've gotten nothing since December. Oh. Okay. So I'm actually on what I think is a fifth ring. And it's like Dante's <laughs> Inferno or something. I don't know. They should call it that. That would be good. <laughs> they just go back in time. I'm running the original <laughs> version. I don't yeah, it just seems really strange how they're doing it, though. I mean, I don't see any yeah. reason that this has to be invitation only. And I, I never did when it was the preview program. So. Nope. Nope. No, I, if anything, it should be more inclusive. I mean, these people tend to yeah. be more enthusiastic, A, uh, Xbox One is one, possibly two, if you want to include the two models, hardware platforms. It's not a million different computers. Right. The, the stuff that can screw up is very minor. Um, and I, as I argued when I wrote about this, I mean, I, just the fact that I turn the thing on every day, play games, and nothing goes wrong 
is valuable telemetry data for them. I, I, oh, yeah. That should be enough, <laughs> you know, if I don't want to test it <laughs> or whatever. But I would be happy to look at the new stuff. I just don't have that opportunity. I, I find it to be very, it, it's like exclusive, you know, like it's um, right. kind of the opposite of what a community is and what the Windows Insider program is. Yeah. It's also weird. They had a workaround um, last time for the anniversary update. You could sign up for dev mode and you'd be able to get it without getting into the preview program. But that's not, that doesn't mm -hmm. work this time. So Right, right, right. Either alpha or beta or nothing. Mm. All right. Well, I'm nothing. That's that's what yeah. I discovered. <laughs> I am nothing. Mm. Did they send you a message telling you what ring you're in? <laughs> you're in the seventh no. ring of hell, no, my friend. That's what I mean. I'm in the fifth <laughs> ring. I, you know, uh, I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> Do they tell you? Is there a little dot? Well, yeah, people have gotten messages where it says, congratulations, you've been welcomed into the whatever, you know. Yeah. I just got the <laughs> yeah. update, and I said, well, I guess I'm in Alpha Ring. Sure, sure. Yeah. All right, you're never coming back on the show. Uh, so, no <laughs> Alpha Rings. He's, both, no, he's uh, also a little no, taller I, I mean, than you, Paul. I just want to <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I've, asked, I've asked them. Repeat, and they're like, oh, <laughs> we're going to look at this. Sorry about that. And, you know, but, I think uh, they should give me an Alpha Ring invite well, just so I can so join funny. you. I got <laughs> it. So, I don't even have an Xbox, but I'm insider. That's going to be I'm the last in. day Paul games right. is I get sniped from some corner in Call of Duty and I look up and the name <laughs> says Mary <laughs> Joe Foley. All right, everybody get it. So go for that gamer tag. Program. Yep. I'm not in the insider program. No, I am not. She doesn't have an Xbox. I'm sorry, Rich. I said uninsider un program. Uninsider. Un She's in the <laughs> uninsider. Yeah. Uninsider. Oh, Anything yeah. but inside. Wow, yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, apparently what I need to be in because my computer will not work now. Should. Uh -oh. <laughs> no. yes. All right. Un All right. We've stretched this as long as I possibly can. This is. Oh, uh, we're gonna is, do data lakes now. This is worse. No, worse, we're gonna do robotics. This is worse than. Taffy on the Atlantic City saltwater taffy puller. Hey, um, did you see the new uh, robotics device from um, uh, Boston Robotics? Mm -mm. Speaking of robotics, I don't know. Did oh, I? yeah. Well, let me see if I can find it for you because this thing is awesome. Was Boston Robot? I thought weren't they Boston, Boston Dynamics? Google? Boston Dynamics. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the one Google oh, bought, yeah. but didn't they yeah. didn't buy or something? I don't know. It's kind of confusing. Let me just yeah, they call it a uh, handle because it can handle things. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, this actually like conflict resolution. It's, it's, a, it's a leaked video because, um, well, I don't think they want us to see it. To be honest with you, because huh. uh, it's on wheels and it's really fast. Mm. Uh, so just you know, be nice to the robots, Mary Jo. I'm just saying. No. Soon, <laughs> soon they'll be faster than you are. Yikes. What do you got for us? So um, Microsoft is doing stuff in robotics too, but they won't talk about it, which is very interesting. They they will talk about things like, you know, we've talked about bot frameworks, chat bots, and things they're doing in that space. But I don't know, I don't know if you guys remember this. When Bill Gates was still at day to day at, at Microsoft, they were really big into robotics and they were investing heavily into robotics. They had a product called the Microsoft Robotics Studio, and they were doing all kinds of things about robots. Um, when Gates left and the people who worked for him in Microsoft Research left, they just kind of stopped doing robotic stuff. But now they're going to come back and do it again. And it's I, so I started looking into this. Um, I started kind of looking in job posts and, you know, sneaking around like I usually do. And I found a few different references to things they're doing in robotics, and they're not kind of those kind of robots. They're they're more like how uh, Microsoft's going to use their technologies to work with industrial robots. You know, so the things that are like robots in factories, things building cars, yeah, the things um, that are bolted to, to the factory floor, exactly. and not coming after you like this, right? Yeah, exactly. I far prefer <laughs> those things. Yeah. Oh, boy. So they actually, they're working on applications that are in the robotics space. They've got um, part of their AI and research group is working very heavily in this space, and they're actually already writing apps to work with these kinds of robots. They're um, also doing a lot with drones, and you don't hear about Microsoft and drones that much, no. but um, they've got a team inside of Microsoft Research called the Aerial Informatics and Robotics Group, and they've been building what they're calling a fleet of flying robots. <laughs> and some of these are, you know, micro UAVs, a.k.a. drones. And 
they're also working on um, technology to help commercial jetliners in this space too. So they're kind of the going the whole gamut in this robotic space. I don't know what they're waiting for to start talking about this, probably giving it to some other publication to do a big story, but um, they've got a lot of little skunk works and big skunk works projects in robotics. So stay tuned. I think we're going to hear more, maybe build, um, maybe some other event. I guess that's uh, now we know why they fired Brian uh, Roper. He can just, they just have a robot with a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Fedora robot. <laughs> Fedora, Fedora bot. <laughs> Actually, I think I, uh, I'm going to make a, a political prediction here, but I think that it's not going to be long before people realize that, uh, the robots are taking our jobs. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, <laughs> that's, that's exactly <laughs> right. Boss. And yeah. And yeah. That, that at some point it's going to be politically difficult to admit that you're working on automation of any kind. Right. Do you think? Yep. No, I think this is our, this is right now. I think this is the big misunderstanding about yeah. jobs. Right. Well, now. Yeah. It's yeah. Automation. People think it's immigrants. It's not, it's robots. Right. Right. Um, so I would, I wonder if Microsoft is going to downplay this at some point. Because what they're working well, on, been, it sounds like, is automation. Yeah, right. and they've been, you know, Satya Nadella keeps putting out statements about the need for ethics in what they're doing in robotics and AI. And, um, you know, this is him saying, we're not going to let, uh, you know, jobs go away. We're going to find ways to retrain people and have them work with AIs and not be replaced by AIs. So they know that's a very touchy subject. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now's the time to, you know, kind of prepare the country and, and mm -hmm. our educational system for a new world where mm -hmm. there aren't going to be a lot of entry-level jobs. Right. Uh, it's, you have to work too, with the robots. It's kind of too bad that, that we're scapegoating um, immigrants when it's really going to be robots. <laughs> sure. Robots. Yeah. Robots are, uh, can defend themselves more easily. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so, you can't build a wall yeah. against robots. Be around those guys. It's the robots that will be building the wall. Right. Right. Uh, we did actually. We did a really good uh, episode of Triangulation on Monday with um, Dale Dougherty, who does make, and uh, he's he's written and his co-author was on too a new book about reinventing cities, but it's also about reinventing education, and and creating small industrial centers where people can do productive work but it's right. but it's but it's a little bit more it's not big assembly line massively uh automated stuff it's skilled mm -hmm. labor and 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 really calling for cities to kind of develop this stuff and and the educational systems to start training young people so that they they can get the, these new jobs that are coming anyway then there's mm -hmm. always robocop uh, well, <laughs> sure. Skynet, <laughs> Skynet, Robocop. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we have the back of the book. Rich, you don't have to stick around for this unless you want to. Sure. Oh, Rich is easy. Yeah. <laughs> really, this is just Paul saying I'm stuff flexible. and Mary Jo and saying stuff. You'll just be sitting in the middle, looking yeah. back and it's... forth. All right, let's, I'm going to let you go, Rich. All right. Sounds yeah. Good. Unless yeah, I'm flexible. Like I well, said. Well, we didn't prepare. We didn't say okay. Yeah, unless you've got a pick or something. I don't see you on the list, so yeah, it's all right. We we literally gave him the list after he yeah. Poor Rich, I know. So, <laughs> poor Rich. We, so, we were just we'll handle this better Sorry. next time. No, this is yes. great. You know what? It was great having him. Rich Woods is senior editor for North America at Neowin.net, and uh, it's interesting that your Twitter handle is the Rich Woods. Is there another Rich Woods that took your <laughs> handle before you got there? Yeah, there's an at Rich Woods. You know, Bastard. if I had a, if I had a time machine, I'd go back to 2009 and. Secure that account. You should be not the Rich Woods, but real Rich Woods. That's what all the all the cool kids are doing now. Yeah. The real Rich Woods. Hey, thank you so much. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. Great to me. have you on. Neowin yeah, net. Sure. And uh, we're going to take a break while we reset the cameras <laughs> or something. I'm making stuff up at this point. Our show, our show today is brought to you by our good friends at WordPress. WordPress.com. WordPress is. I, I love this stat. Powers 27% of all the websites in the 27% of all the websites in the world, including some of the biggest names in business, news, and tech. I think Therot.com. Even Therot.com. Even Therot. Even Therot. That mega conglomerate Therot.com. 
WordPress means business. They know you do too. So create your small business website at WordPress.com today with built-in search engine optimization, mobile-friendly design. Of course, your customers can find your website easily and access, access it from any device. And not only do, do more websites run on WordPress, but because 27% of all the websites are on WordPress, there are a lot more people who can help you. Third-party developers, customizers, programmers. There's a great ecosystem. It's the best. And 24-7 support, of course, from WordPress.com. Find answers to your questions and go back to getting stuff done. Come see why more websites run on WordPress than on any other platform. Join the thousands of small businesses who use WordPress for theirs. WordPress is right now offering you to kind of celebrate 27% off. See, at first I went, what is, why 27%? Now I understand. 27% because they own 27% of the web. 27% uh, off a premium or business plan when you go to wordpress.com slash windows. Wordpress.com slash windows to start your small business website today. 27% off, but you got to go to wordpress.com slash windows. Time for Paul Therott and his pick. What are you laughing? His I don't pick know. of the I mean, week. It's time for me. Time for Therott. It's Therott time. <laughs> Uh, while you were doing that, yes. Ad, I got a, an update from Brad, <clears throat> so I think I will provide you with that update, which oh, is... how's his tummy? Uh, he's not going to die, so that's good. That's good. Um, he has, I, I don't want to, you know, violate his privacy per se, but he has, uh, like, he had that internal he's bleeding issue. He's got explosive diarrhea. It's okay, <laughs> you can say. I don't mean it like that, but, oh. well, no, it's, it's a little more serious than that, but no, um, he... Right now, it's just going to rest. He's taking Good. blood thickening Good. medicine. Obviously, the Good. idea is whatever is bleeding, you want it to stop bleeding, and yes. hopefully not in by some invasive means. So that's the plan yeah. for now. So he's going to rest, and he should be okay. And hopefully, that's the end of it. Whew. Good. That's a relief. Good, Good to hear. Hey, we're thinking of you, Brad. <clears throat> feel better. I know yeah, he's especially me. I have show. to do more work when he's not around. Yeah. <laughs> Why does nobody think about how this impacts me? <laughs> <laughs> Is how Think my mother would handle rock. this. Anyway. <laughs> well, and uh, this just <sighs> in. Uh, Skype uh, went perfectly in the White House, and Rafael Rivera is cheering. Good. Yes. Yes. Right. I, I want that version of Skype. I want the version TX. of Skype that I'm, doesn't. I'm telling TX. you, Skype TX. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I want that. I, I, I have. We need that. I don't know. If we, we've never really discussed this, but I have a lot of problems with Skype. Maybe someday I'll write about that. I can tell you now it was a secret. <laughs> It was a secret, but we were testing Skype TX for several months. And yeah. uh, the problem is it's essentially the same. It's just got more buttons and dials at our end. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it would yep. save your pain. Mm. But uh, we're probably going to get those talk show boxes and start using that from, from yeah. the uh, new yeah, tech people. Nice. Yeah. Same ones used in the White House wow. for the press conferences. And right. we're also I'm also looking at some other choices that would involve... A ch uh, you guys having to run a custom client, but okay. it might be a little bit better. There's a, there's some kind of higher end voice and video uh, providers out there, and uh, so we're going to look at that because I know you're I know you're mm -hmm. suffering. And I don't want you to suffer. No, <laughs> thank suffering. you. Yeah, thank you for acknowledging my suffering. Yeah, I feel your pain, man. <laughs> The usual response I get when I complain about things to Microsoft is like, oh, that's the first time anyone's ever brought that up. I'll, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'll reconnoiter with the team and see what they say. Anywho. Anywho. So uh, <laughs> tip, of the, week of, the week. Yep. tip of the week is uh, I've written an article about choosing uh, the right living room set-top box. It's really going to be boxes because one of the problems with all these boxes is that there is no one box that does everything. So if you've got content in Apple or Google or Amazon or Microsoft or whatever – um, there's no one thing that does all that stuff. And that kind of stinks. Um, it's especially a problem for people in the Microsoft camp, which is why I wrote about it, because we literally have nothing. Um, there is not a single set-top box in the world that supports Microsoft's content services like Groove or um, the Microsoft Movies and TV service, which is terrible. And this is something I... It's sort of like the, uh, the Office 365 number thing. I bring this up from time to time because I'm curious why nothing has been done about this. Uh, Microsoft could write apps for Roku or Apple TV or Android TV or all of those things would be great. I don't know why they don't. Um, or they could come out with their own set-top box, which they've been rumored to do, and it kind of comes and goes, and we'll see. But the best you can do right now on the Microsoft end is to get an Xbox, right? Because it's the one box that does have all that stuff. It's 
$250. It has a fan. It's about as powerful as a lunar lander, and it's really big. It's not the same as like a Roku, but um, that's basically your your only your only good solution. Um, By the way, they're so. gonna. I think Microsoft wants to use that as a slogan. What's X that? Xbox, the only box that does all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is the it is, and it, it has a whole app ecosystem. It has all the other stuff too. But it's just it's it's a slightly ponderous way to do this stuff. Um, the yeah, app pick of this week Ra is Raphael's, <laughs> yeah. Raphael's final <laughs> yeah. tweet. White House press briefing for Skype Q and A went off. I gotta I gotta edge. make him use his powers for good again. I gotta work. <laughs> up. Yes, you do. It's got, this is your job. It's a little meme heavy, I think, in the last yeah. few tweets. Yep. Uh, now I will never get Shia LaBeouf out of my head. Anywho, um, Microsoft updated its Microsoft Authenticator app on Android and iOS over the past week. I didn't actually notice it till the other day when they did it on uh, the iPhone. But this is actually a really big update. I, I have just sort of a running tip that you should enable two-factor authentication on all of your accounts that support it. Um, Microsoft account is one of them. It's a very important account. You need to protect it. So 2FA is the way to go. Uh, Microsoft's version of 2FA, I know it's not exactly the same thing. It's called two, It's two-step verification. It li they are literally not exactly the same, but they're, for all intents and purposes, the same kind of thing. Their Microsoft Authenticator app is excellent, and on Microsoft accounts, it, it allows you to do like a pop-up thing where you approve it. You don't have to type in codes. It's really nice. But they've made it even easier, and I'm curious, Leah, what you think about this. Um, now you can approve logins from your phone from the authenticator app on your phone without typing in your password. Yeah. So in other words, you're on your PC, you go to OneDrive.com for the first time ever, let's say. You type in your Microsoft account, um, you know, email address, but you don't type in your password. Um, you you choose, uh, use an app instead uh, for the first time, then it will just automatically do this. And it pops up this. a notification that says, do you approve And it does it on the phone. But you yeah, know, they, so you that's not new. They, they've had this feature for some time. Not well, not on Microsoft account. I, I, I've oh, never, okay. Because I've I've there was I've, some I've Microsoft Authenticator this. that allowed me to do that, and Google's been doing it now. Well, no, no, okay, right. So let me. I'm sorry. Let me make sure I, I, I am communicating the difference. The the way this worked until this past week was you went to the OneDrive website, you typed in your email address, but you also typed in your password. Then it would go and oh, say, "Oh, it's not even now, asking for the password now." Right. So in other words, what they're doing, oh, they're, they're, what they call like this that. feature is phone sign in. Back to single factor authentication. Well. It's see, it's 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 not clear to me yet how this works over the long term. You know, like the first time you do something like this is like additional steps. So, for example, I mentioned the first time you do this, you have to say, "I'm not doing this the normal way. I'm not going to do the password. I'm going to use an app instead." And then the to the way it works now is the let me see if I get this right. The yeah, the website on the PC throws up three numbers after this, like fourteen, fifty four, and right. thirty six, and then you have one number on the phone. And you have you to select one. the right number you to get into one. the site. All right. Now, I don't think it. I don't think it's going to work that way every single time. I think literally the point of this is that it's. Um, it's still single factor. I mean, it, so you think it's single factor? Yeah. Well, if somebody had your phone. Uh, if someone had your phone. Yeah. I mean, you have oh, to be I know what they're doing. It. You know what? I just thought what they're doing. Yep. So they put a cookie on your browser. So somebody would have to have your phone and be sitting at your browser. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, you'd have so, to be, right. So, so, so there's a token on your browser. So it is two-factor, I guess. Uh, it's two things you have as opposed to a thing yeah, you have. Yeah, there you go. And I, Right. And, it, and that's actually a subtle difference between two-step verification and two-factor, right? I, right. But um, I guess I'm just I'm curious about this. I, I My first reaction to this was it doesn't seem like it's all that much easier. But actually, it is, it's tons easier. Oh, and yeah. this is part of Microsoft's no more goal password. to get rid of passwords, yeah. right? But so if you're using like, something like LastPass, where it's generating huge complex passwords that you know nothing about, in tandem with this, and you're logging into your PC, you're not, you know, you're not doing a no password thing over there, and you're logging into your phone, which you should be doing on both these devices, right? right? Uh, you don't have to do it again and again. I, I think that that's okay. Yeah. Be because uh, you authenticate it once with two-factor, and then thereafter you need only use the phone but right. it's but it's making sure that it's still you. It's, it's so somebody in 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 Russia can't log in as you even if they had your right. phone. Right. They'd have to That's be right. sitting at your computer. So I yeah, think they'd that, have to have both, and you would have and would have to be logged into both. Yeah. 
We'll run this by yep. Steve Gibson. You know, Google's moving in yeah. this direction as well, but they still require. So now when I go to a Google site, I still mm -hmm. enter my name and password, but instead of having to enter in a six digit authentication code, yeah, it you just get the pop pops up on, up on my screen. Yep. And Microsoft's been doing that for a while too. But this, yeah. but this is different. This, this doesn't takes it another step, yeah. right? It's yeah, it's yeah. very interesting. Well, we got to get away from passwords, so I'm all for that. Yeah, that sounds like a good compromise between security and convenience. I, I need to use it more. The problem is, it's hard to trigger these things, right? Like, um, I've logged into everything everywhere, right? So every so often, uh, you need to do it again because it's been 30 days right. or whatever. As long as they do that, I think that's you know. That's yeah. pretty good. I started just installing web browsers so I could log into stuff for the first time just to see what it would do, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. But um, it's it's unclear how it works over time. Like, so I, I, I need to just keep using it and see how it goes. But it seems like it's going to be simpler while still being secure enough given the fact that I secure all my devices. Yeah, nobody's sitting at your computer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your computer you have to log into, so. Right, that's what I mean. And, and, and if you have like modern phone devices, you too, you're using right? a fingerprint yeah, reader on yeah. the phone and you're using yeah. a camera or a fingerprint reader on your computer, it seems like this is I think it's good. pretty safe. I think it's good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, app? Oh, that was the app. Okay. Now let's, yep, do, uh, let's do Mary Jo Foley's Enterprise Pick of the Week. Yes, I have it wrong in the notes, but it's next Wednesday, not Tuesday. It's Windows Developer Day. Mark your calendars, February 8th. Do um, I get to wear a special hat? You do. You can wear whatever you want. Or you can be like that naked jogger in Redmond and wear just sneakers. It's up to you. Did you hear about that one? <laughs> well, I think I've heard everything now I need to know, really. Just he was naked. And, yeah. Yeah. Cops uh, found a guy running along the side of Microsoft's campus yeah. wearing nothing but sneakers okay. recently. <laughs> okay, that's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but back to Developer Day, uh, February 8th. Mike, you can go on Microsoft's developer site, which is developer.microsoft.com, top right-hand corner, RSVP today for this. It's a free webcast. Uh, they're going to talk all about things that developers need to know about the Windows 10 creators update. So they're going to talk about what's new in UWP tooling, XAML, um, Bash, of course, and more. And it's it's a multiple hour event with a keynote. Um, there's some talk about Cortana skills, uh, things uh, that developers should know about what's changing around the Windows store, developer tools and updates and a q and It's So it's like a three or four hour event. If you are somebody who has developed or want to develop apps for Creators Update, you should probably tune into this next week. Um, so that's one of my enterprise picks for the week. Then I have another one about Notepad because that's everyone's favorite text editor, I'm sure. Microsoft <laughs> has a place you can go and vote if you are so inclined for a dark theme for Windows 10 Notepad. So if you are interested in Windows 10 Notepad getting a dark theme, go to aka.ms slash LGSXKC. I just uploaded AKA, it. I knew you would. Yes. aka.ms slash LGSXKC. Um, I even wrote a poem about this last week to try to help people <laughs> who wanted to upvote this. Yeah. Would you like to hear my poem? I would. I tweeted it. Um, is your Windows 10 notepad dream for it to have a dark theme? <laughs> if so, oh, here you go. And I gave the URL. So there you go. You know, here's another angle. Linux has had this for years. Shouldn't we? <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yes. Dark theme. Love it. Dark theme. Love yep. it. And, and Not all everyone you have to do when, a dark you, thing. when you go to that uh, URL, it opens the Microsoft Feedback Hub. So if you mm -hmm. if you're already in the Feedback Hub, I guess you could look for that. Is that what yeah, they're using sure. that for, or w w that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, there's yeah, you can vote on features and upvote things and give them feedback on things that aren't working and are working in Windows 10. All right. By the way, that's a capital L, so it's yeah, capital sorry, L G S X K C because I'm pretty sure it's case sensitive. Capital yeah, LGSX, right. Casey. Yep. 
Uh, and now the code name pick of the week. Code name pick of the week. I don't think I've ever made this the pick, um, but it's something that's going to be coming up fairly soon in the news. So I think we should make it the pick, if, if even if it's again. The code name is Oasis. So if you hear Microsoft talk about Oasis, that is the code name for the Windows holographic shell that's in Windows 10. And the reason I think we're going to be hearing more about this is I believe there's going to be some SDK information for people building apps using this coming out around the time of the Game Developers Conference in March. Um, so I think we're going to start hearing more again about how Microsoft's enabling its partners to build these cheaper VR headsets that uh, take advantage of the Windows holographic shell that's part of the creator's update. So that shell itself, that holographic shell for Windows for these headsets is codenamed Oasis. If you hear Oasis, that's what that is. Why is it Oasis? I don't know. Another one. it's a, a <laughs> watery <laughs> spot in the middle of the desert. Right. Or something. Yeah. A derivative band <laughs> from England? Or that. <laughs> so no, they live in a northern land. I'm yes. ready for some beer. Okay. And uh, before we do this, we have to ask you, podcast listeners, are you over 21? If yes. not, please tune Don't to listen. How Things <laughs> Work podcast or something else. <laughs> Grammar Girl. What's your beer? <laughs> My beer today is from Firestone Walker in Paso Robles. I love that um, name. They, they do wines there, but they also do some excellent dark beers. Mm -hmm. They're known for some of their bourbon barrel beers. But today's pick is not that. Today's pick is a Firestone Walker sour beer, and the name is called Creaky Bones, K-R-I-E-K-Y. So if you're a beer person, you probably know Creek beers are cherry beers. Oh. And um, this is a cherry sour beer. Um, they age it with sour cherries in oak barrels, I believe. And so if you're somebody who's been kind of interested in sours, but not, not looking for something super sour, I would say try this. If you like cherries and you're intrigued by the idea of a sour beer, this is kind of a nice entry level sour if you can find it. Very so look nice. for Creek Bones. Very it's very nice. refreshing. <laughs> you are wonderful, my dear fairy. Wonderful. <laughs> and that, my friends, concludes this fine episode Windows Weekly with our special guest, Rich Woods of NeoWin. That was fun. Yes, he did a great job. I know it wasn't really planned, but it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> we thought Paul he was would... a good sport about it. <laughs> yeah. We didn't know Paul would be out of Africa, so. Right. Yep. And Brad, we wish you the best. <laughs> I somehow doubt Brad's <laughs> listening right now, but. <clears throat> right. Yep. Hope you feel better. And I hope you all come back and do this again with us next Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC for Windows Weekly. Every week, you can watch live and join us in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. But you don't have to because we make on-demand audio and video available always at twit.tv slash ww or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And, of course, catch Paul's act all week long at therot.com, <laughs> T-H-U-R-O-double-good.com, T-H-U-R-R-O-double-good.com. Two R's, two T's, and it means it's four times better. Mary Jo Foley's All About Microsoft at allaboutmicrosoft.com, her ZDNet blog. And together they join us every week right here at this time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a great week. You going anywhere? You going to be back next week? I'm, I'm going to be here. <laughs> I didn't know about the Africa trip. Wow. Yeah, it was kind of a surprise. Yeah. Surprise. I, I went to. Wow. Well, we're glad you. We're glad you didn't. I mean, I'm. I'm not, not glad you didn't for the reasons you didn't. But I'm yeah. glad you were here. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye. -bye. Bye.